Hey, folks, this is Hannes Finney from the Story Worthy Podcast, and we want to thank you for your support. We want to thank you for listening. And you know what? The only way for us to grow is for you to tell your friends, tell your family, tell people you don't even like. We need you to get the word out there about Story Worthy. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. This episode of Story Worthy is brought to you by GoDaddy. Don't let someone steal your great idea. Register a domain name now and put your idea online. GoDaddy's offering one new or transfer.com for the low price of $2.95. So whether you're building your dream business or starting a website for fun, visit GoDaddy.com and enter the code STORY295 at checkout. Some limitations apply. See website for details. Don't forget, you guys, visit GoDaddy.com and enter the code STORY295 at checkout, and you are supporting this podcast. Hi, this is Amber Tozer, and you're listening to Storyworthy. Ouch! Welcome to the Storyworthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannes Finney. Welcome to Storyworthy. My name is Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannes Finney and we are at the Griffith Observatory in Griffith Park in Los Angeles. Why, you may ask? Because there are many, many coyotes in Griffith Park. Exactly. And that is our topic today, coyotes. That's right. Our uh, guest tonight, Amber Tozer, she brings forth the topic, coyotes. Yes. Now, Amber's been on the show before. She has. She could not look up from tweeting. She would not make <laughs> eye contact with us because she's all young and hip. Now, now but, you are so jealous of her youth. You're jealous of I'm her I'm jealous youth. of her tweeting. You're jealous it's, of her ability to gain an audience. Yes, I am certainly jealous of that because <laughs> I send out one tweet every three months and then I'm like angry that people don't retweet it. Although I've had some, I'll say this. I, I have recently had people that I don't know who they are who follow me who have retweeted tweets I put out. Well, and it is an odd experience. I know that's fans. what's supposed to happen, but I'm like, oh, oh, it worked. Well, oh, you okay. see that feeling? Now you take that and do it 10 times a day. Then you get that dopamine. It keeps hitting you. What do you think we're doing out here? <laughs> it sounds like you're describing masturbation. Oh, see, there you go. Okay, Amber do Tozer. So a she's a great, a very funny writer, a great comedian, and she brings forth the topic coyotes. And boy, that's an easy topic here in, in Los Angeles. Yes. You, I didn't really understand like how... Coyotes just fucking come out of. I used to. I I, I used to uh, a dog walk a French dog uh, near where you live now in Las Vegas, and I was just walking this dog, and so I look over and I go, "Oh, there's another dog across the street." Oh, I wonder if it's in its yard because there's no leash. And then I realized there are three dogs. Right. I realized they're coyotes, and they're giving us the death stare. Right. Like this is an urban environment. They've come out of a park, crossed one of the busiest streets in Los Angeles. And are hunting for cats. Well, they're, they're, they're actually like, you look called. Tasty. They're actually called urban coyotes. I mean, yeah. they they are they are completely fearless of people. They walk down the street like they own the flipping thing. I mean, they are very very bold. Yeah, and um, they're like Henry Winkler. They've completely lost their fear of humans. What, what does that like have to do the with fawns, Henry Winkler? The fawns, like those, the fawns, those young toughs in their leather jackets and their greasy hair. They walk down the street like, hey man, we own this place. I think that was more like a fox than a coyote. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's a coyote. All right, here's the thing, you guys. The urban coyotes, the problem is the situation is further worsened by people intentionally or unintentionally feeding the coyotes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So now you're hiking, you're not far from your house, or you're walking down the street, you throw an apple core. You know what that says? That says, hey, I'm a source of food. Come eat me, Mr. Coyote. Yeah, exactly. You're, you have a cat. You keep your cat outside. Guess what? It's not going to last. Yeah. Not, Cats no. and dogs in Los Angeles, if they're small enough, and you let them out, there's a good chance they will be Yeah, eaten. and then people also live in these these areas that have only been built up in the past 10 or 15 years where they're like, it was wild forever, thousands of years, and then they put a subdivision. Right. And all of a sudden people are like, I don't understand why a coyote came in. And the coyote is like, what the fuck are you doing in my yard? Now, one time I was living all the way down on Lyman Place by Hollywood Boulevard, so it was like maybe 10 blocks from the park, yeah. pretty far from the park. Yeah, far. And there was a coyote outside of not outside of Carolyn's window. Carolyn, you know, our girlfriend yeah, who lived yeah. below me, yeah. outside of her window eating a cat in the middle of the night, and like chomping on its head on the sidewalk. And yeah. Carolyn looks out because she hears, you know, what's going on. Yeah. She looks out. Coyote's got the cat, you know, by the head, eating it. In the morning, we look out. 
or when we go outside yeah. on the sidewalk, all there is is like the head of a cat and like this spine, like this whole thing. It Jesus. was like it was make believe. It was like a prop, right? Like I was dead a movie. cat prop. Yeah. It was so disgusting. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and yeah. Again, I don't think people are getting how er, where you were was like right off Hollywood Boulevard. Like it was gritty and dirty and, and there was a car cars dealership. Go by a day, right. Yeah, it's like the most urban place you can think of and those freaking coyotes come in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now here's here's something when when Amber brought this topic coyotes, I start thinking about this guy I play tennis next to. Now it's not my tennis partner. I don't even okay. know this man's name, but he's been playing next to me on the courts for years, five or six years. And here's the thing. Wild E coyote? He uh, these even t- the, the tennis courts where we it's play, it's called Vermont Canyon. It's way up okay. in the park in Griffith Park, right. and it's just canyons all the way around, okay? There's no roads. It's just canyons. Everybody sees coyotes. I mean, it's not yeah. like, oh, I saw a coyote. It's like, of course you saw a coyote because there's one there and there's one over there. I mean, yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah. There's signs up there that say, keep your dog on a leash. Keep your dog on a leash. There's signs everywhere. Yeah. But this guy, this tennis guy, he won't do it. He will not put his dog on a leash. And while he's playing tennis, he allows his fluffy white dog that looks just like Benji <laughs> run up and down the trails and in the canyons. Okay, yeah. now th- this inevitably leads to a confrontation from a hiker or a jogger and the tennis guy. So it goes like this. It goes, hey, is this somebody's dog? Whose dog is this? Hey, whose dog is this? And then he'll say, it's mine. <laughs> hey, well, you might want to put him on a leash because, you know, there's coyotes all over here. Yeah, I got it. No, really, you might want to put your dog on a leash. Fuck you. Well, fuck you. So this happens. <laughs> every single time. This happens. I swear to God, I hear that conversation every week. And it's like he wants to, A, Murder his dog. B, he wants to have this confrontation with people. Yeah. It's the strangest thing. Like, he Okay, knows. I think that he's angry. He wants to have the confrontation. And I think it's his wife's dog. And I think he <laughs> hates the dog. That's got to be. He's got to hate the dog. Otherwise, there's no way that he would let this happen. I think, but he he's, just wants to fight with people. Like, well, he, he wants, knows somebody's going to say something. Yeah. It's but really strange. there's easier ways to fight with people okay, than using your dog. And by the way, the time, dog is still alive. So for all we know, this is some like kryptonite dog yeah. that has super strength or yeah. something because it's still uh, it's still around. One time when I was hiking up in the park, I was coming up the road, up the road by the golf course, and some guy was running down with his dog in his arms, bloody, screaming, Ugh. my dog, my dog, who had just been bit. By yeah, coyote. that sucks. Now, due to their small size, coyote attacks tend to be greater a greater threat to children than they are to adults. Do you ever hear of a coyote attacking a, a child, Hans? Yes. This happens. Uh, their bushy tails make them look quite large, but actually they only weigh up to about 35 pounds. The children? No, coyotes. Oh, okay. But 35 pounds is more than a kid, isn't it? Well, and it's like, you know, uh, if you ever... You know, been bitten by anything. It's like the the amount of strength that any animal has in its jaws is like beyond the grip of anyone's hand or anything. Yeah, it's like crazy. Okay, I'm gonna read you. So a if you ever get of... into an accident uh, or a, a fight, by the way, bite the person. Bite the person. They will I... fucking let go of you. If you bite someone and draw blood, I think they're gonna I be like, heard... "You're fucking out of your mind." <laughs> I heard one time if you're being attacked by a shark to bite it between the eyes. Is that possible? I've heard you punch it between the you eyes. Punch, punch it in the it. nose. Punch it in the nose. Yes. I'm going to punch it. I'm going to put that in my noggin. Yeah, now that's you know easier said than done. <laughs> you you know the 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 water is filled with blood and urine. I'm not saying who's and you're like, I think I'll punch it in the nose. It seems <laughs> unlikely somehow. Okay, let me give you a couple of coyote attacks here in Los Angeles. Just I find it fascinating. Uh, this is this is this is a while back, July 2001. A coyote bit a three-year-old Irvine boy in the leg while he was playing in his yard. Uh, the boy was saved by his father. October 2001. In San Clemente, a coyote attacked three children playing on a schoolyard, biting and scratching an eight-year-old girl on the back and neck and a seven-year-old on the back and arm. A third student was also attacked, but the coyote only bit his backpack. Oh, shit. That would be scary, right? Yeah, but it was that backpack from Door of the Explorer, so it was like, help me! Help me! In November 2001, a coyote that a San Diego family had been feeding, hello, Yeah, well. bit their eight-year-old daughter. Of course it did. December 2001, in San Gabriel, a coyote bit a three-year-old girl in the head, grabbed her shoulder, and started to drag her away. Who was chased off by her father. Here's one at May in Anza Borrego Park. Have you ever been there, San Diego? No, but I'm not going now. A A coyote bit a boy who was sleeping in his sleeping bag on the head. Dragged him out of the tent. Ugh. (laughs) 
Sh- just here's yeah. one. So just don't July go camping. This is what. Stay out of the fucking well, woods. What about this? Uh, here's a boy walking his family's two dogs when they were all attacked by three coyotes. One dog was killed and the other was injured before they were rescued by the father. And then just round off this good news. In August of 2003, in Apple Valley, a coyote attacked a four-year-old boy on a golf course. So that's golfing, biting him on the face and the neck before he was saved by his father. Just stay inside, people. (laughs) Can there be any good from coyotes? What is the good? No, I I suppose that if you were to, like, try... It is amazing to me that they don't have any control over the... I mean, Griffith Park is a gigantic, wild space. It's the largest urban park in the United States. They would make some effort to control the coyote population. But, of course, if that happened, PETA would get involved. Then you're going to hear about, yeah, from the other side. And they are very beautiful. One thing with coyotes, you always know right away that it's not a regular dog because they don't have on the collar, do yeah, they, Yeah, but you know who had the best uniforms in the World War II? The Nazis. Those guys were sharp. Yeah. But, see, they were bad. You can't go by appearances. So you're talking about a wolf in sheep's clothing. Ooh, I like that. No, I'm talking about how a wolf is hot, but, you know, (laughs) but he'll eat your fucking head. Hey, listen, you guys, coyotes. This is a great topic. I'm really thrilled that Amber brought it to us. I know. Let's hope that uh, it wasn't her child who was dragged out of the sleeping (laughs) bag because that's really going to make things awkward. I don't think she has children. That's what I think. Not anymore. Not since the coyotes. She's from Colorado, and they've got coyotes there, too. Do they? But they're all high. Ladies and gentlemen, like, uh, dude, hey folks, Dave's wanna, not here, man. If you want to support the podcast, that'd be great. Here's the best way to do it. You tell a friend about our show. That's what you do. I know. Seriously. Email the link. Just share it on Facebook. You don't have to email shit. It's you know so what? easy to, to hear share. the show, you guys. You hear it on Stitcher. You hear it on Swell. You hear it on Antenna. You know how I watched the show the other night? I watched it on yeah. my Apple TV. You can go to the, on Apple TV, you go to podcasts. Yep. Now, there's nothing to see but our picture, but yeah. who doesn't want to look at that? And then you hear the show. <laughs> so my daughter rolls her eyes. She's like, Mama, on TV? Please. Right. Like, I got to listen to you already. You know what, Alabama? No. It's coming. You'll see. Yeah. That's it's the all, future. The story I know. We're going to have to put up, like, maybe we truth. should put up a picture of a coyote with this one. So when you listen to this one on your Apple TV, there'll be a picture of a coyote. <laughs> all right, you guys, wherever you are, stay tuned because Amber Tozer is on her way here. Next time on Story Worthy, we have author Lee Keckner. I'll be talking about spirituality. That's next week on Story Worthy. Put some money in the plate. Hey, folks, guess what? Storyworthy is now dropping twice a week. Twice? What, 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 does this mean more work? It's a little bit. It's double the work is what it is, actually. Oh. But two brand new true stories coming at you every week from the Storyworthy podcast. I guess that is good because that's twice as much me. Twice as much me. I'm sorry, my earphones are cutting out. What did you say? <laughs> hey I folks, heard, just heard it was listen me. Listen in. Twice a week, Storyworthy will be coming at you. Twice a week. Twice. This is Vito Lapicola from Comics on Comics, and you're listening to Storyworthy. And we're back. We're now in the Leonard Nimoy Event Horizon Theater at the Griffith Park. Leonard Nimoy gave money to the ren- renovation of Griffith He did. Of, uh, you know, I'm a friend of the observatory. I don't mean really? to, you know, throw that out there, but I am. I'm, in fact, I'm a friend of the observatory. I can see all the poor planetarium shows anytime I want. Awesome. Well, that that's makes me feel bad that your, I say they're poor, but they are. Between no. your medical marijuana card and that, <laughs> I say it's a good Friday night. Listen, no, they've got like five or seven shows up there running, okay? Right. But there's like three of them that are so bad, I'm embarrassed for the planetarium. I have written letters and saying, you got to stop this. Because they're like the old school, it's like the planetarium show from 1975, I don't know. Some Somehow of their shows. to me that seems Some like of them the, are good. Some of them are just outdated. They just need to, you know, welcome to... Well, they're still calling Pluto, Pluto a planet or something. Yeah. Still the world, oh, you my know. goodness. However, you know, when Jesus created the Earth, ah, it's a little old school for me. But I'll say, the place is filthy with coyotes. I'll say that. Yeah. Filthy with coyotes. All right, you guys. That, by the way, is the name of my first band, Filthy with Coyotes. <laughs> That's not a bad name. That's not a bad name at all. All right, you guys. She's here right now. Amber Tozer. She's a writer and a comedian. And she was on Last Comic Standing. Do you remember that, Hannes? I do. She was so cute on that. She's tiny as a button and tiny this long, a button, beautiful and she's, hair. She's, she's wearing adorable. an adorable shirt with a logo. Um, I don't understand what it is. Amber is known for her web series, Knit Twits. Oh. Knit Twits, which is described as a sketch comedy uh, web series inspired by the funniest tweets. 
There that you kind go. of writes itself, I would think, right? Exactly. Nick Twits. And also, she's developing an animated series called The Tozer Show. You can find her on Twitter, where she's very popular. Yes. At Amber Tozer. So, folks, wherever you are, put your hands together for Amber Tozer. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So, this was probably five years ago, and I was dog-sitting my friend's parents' dog. Their older couple retired, and they were going on... Uh, like a 10 day trip to Europe. And I was in, Enc- they live in Encino, sort of um, west of the 101. And the, it's their backyard, beautiful big backyard. And then there's a fence, and then it sort of dips down into a canyon. And they had a, a small dog latte. It's a Bichon, but those little puffy, I don't know if it's a poodle, the, a, a poodle breed, but um, tiny white dog. And super hyper and cute. And so I was there for a few days and everything was going great. And I mean, it was pretty simple. You just, it's a tiny dog. I didn't really have to walk it. So I would just open up the sliding glass door and let it go out to the bathroom. So, um, and this couple loves this dog because both their kids moved out. You know, they have three kids. All their kids. So this this dog is their child. And, they, and you know, you can tell, I feel like. You can tell how much a dog owner loves their dog just by the way their eyes twinkle when they talk about it. So their eyes are like they're explaining everything and they're just they're just like full of love for this dog. Oh, and I so I was a little nervous. I was like, all right, this is this it's 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 nerve wracking to be a dog sitter because it's very important. It's almost like babysitting a child. So anyway, so I'm at their house and it was about uh, it was probably five o'clock. The sun was setting five or six o'clock. And um, I let Latte out to go to the bathroom. I just open up the sliding glass door, and then the Latte runs out into the backyard, and then I hear this horrible screech, screeching sound. And I knew, I knew, I knew the dog was getting attacked. And I run out there, and there's a coyote with Latte limp in its mouth, just like dangling. Latte's dangling, eyes closed. I'm like, oh my, he's already dead. And I'm trying to talk. The coyote was across the yard. They had a pool. So it was on the other side of the pool. So I was like walking towards this coyote, sort of pleading with it. Like, please, please, coyote, please, please drop the dog. And I'm talking to it as if it was a, a human. And they, coyotes are very scary when you get up close and they're looking at you because, and, and he was the, the coyote was super super scrawny, and you could just tell it was just. It, I wasn't going to win this battle, so I I started to I wanted to chase it a little bit just because I wanted to see if something would happen. So I started to chase the coyote, <laughs> and he ran down into the canyon, and I'm standing there in the backyard. I can't see them anymore. I don't hear anything, and I'm just standing there, and I just think this is it. You know. What am I going to tell these people? I, my heart sank. I, um, I was, I was flipping out. And, um, I think I, I had quit drinking like six months before. It was early, early on in sobriety. And I walked in and they had this, this liquor cabinet. And I was like, I get, I get to drink over this. It was, it was insane because I really did. I was like, this is a perfect excuse. I get to have that entire bottle of whiskey over this because I cannot, I can't handle what just happened. So I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, all right, I think I'm going to have a drink of alcohol. And then I hear, um, clink, 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 clink. I hear dog tags clinking and clanking. And I walk out to the backyard and Latte comes like bounding up through the garden. They had this beautiful garden. It was like slow motion. Latte is like jumping around in these flowers. And I'm like, what? Oh my God. What? And he, and, and, and he runs up and, um, I am like petting him and just checking him out. And he just had a little pierce on his neck, like a little bloody, hole like a tiny 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 hole from the the coyote's teeth and uh and then shit everywhere like he shit everywhere like shit was all over his body so I think he you know he shit his pants and um 
So I don't know if that's why the what happened down there because I I want to know what happened in that minute where I was about to relapse. <laughs> I want to know how he got loose. I don't know if the coyote was like, "Ew, you're you stink. This is disgusting," or I I sort of think that Latte was playing dead, and there was a fence. So maybe while the coyote was trying to negotiate the fence, there was a moment where Latte got free. But I. Oh my God, it was amazing. It was amazing. It was a miracle. And then I called their daughter, the owner's daughter, because I was friends with her and told her what happened. And she met me at the vet. And uh, he, fine, Latte is completely fine. Nothing wrong, just that little, no, nothing really. And the, the vet was like, I can't believe it. I've never, this never happens, especially with a dog this size. We've never had a story like this. And, um, then I didn't tell the, I don't think the owners found out till I got I don't think th- their daughter and I decided not to tell them and then when they got back I told them what happened and uh, then they gave me an extra hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> oh. I I was so scared for that latte. Oh. I was terrified. See, this is the that thing dog. about like I was saying about the like Encino is built up into the hills. It's like that isn't an official park. A lot of Los Angeles is wild. It's not like New York City or Chicago. People they don't live here. They don't understand how the city is really surrounded and in the center of like that's a caramel filling of wildness. Right. Like these We're these, in their home. Caramel filling filling well, what a wildness. What I'm saying is like it's that. not like they're it's just on the outside. It's like the city surrounds big wild open spaces. Right. And like there just happens to have not been they happen to have not been developed yet. But they're developed up to the edge of. So these people probably lived in the hills. Yeah. I assume. Yeah, they lived in the hills. And it's like, you know, the uh, yeah, the, well, you know, like I think the dog brilliantly. See, nature is so smart. He did play dead because he made a sound, and you came out. He was, and you're like, "Oh my god, he's dead!" It was too soon, so he's like, "I'm going limp," because like if I, you know, if I, if Shaquille O'Neal decided to drag me somewhere, my only chance would be I'm going to go limp and then wait for him to loosen his grip on me. Right. So it's like, <laughs> nice and that's uh, it's, in, it's an ongoing, on uh, you know, <laughs> dream that I have. But that's not what we're here to discuss. No, I'm you, just saying. Brilliantly, the dog was like, "I'm going to go limp." Right. This under, you know, malnourished, stupid coyote is going to let go of me, and I'm going to run. Because it couldn't have been dead from the moment it went squeak. You know, it's it's yeah. it squealed, yeah. and the moment you ran outside, it couldn't have been dead that fast anyway. Well, I don't. You know. Well, you don't know. That's you don't know how long it was going on. Yeah. Well, no, I believe dead. that you. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, you don't know if that was his last squeak ever. Right. Right. Because yeah. because he broke his neck or whatever. And so, and coyotes. When you were looking for the word, you said you got close to it. It's looking to you in its eyes, and it's scrawny. And I think the word you were looking for is that they're desperate. Yeah. Coyotes are desperate. And they'll do, and it's, their desperation is much bigger than my desperation, I guess, because I thought I'm not going to, the first thing He has nothing to lose and you have your own life to lose. Yeah, he, I I just, I just knew by the look in that coyote's eyes that I was not going to be able to Did the owners of that dog ever say anything about like, hey, be careful when you let her out? Or be careful, be, you know, you got to watch her or something like that. Yeah, they did. They they told me. But they, but then they said, just let her out. You know, they said, there's coyotes around here, but, you know. But they said, when you let her to the bathroom, just let her go in the backyard. But I don't. They are most often out at dawn and dusk, for sure. Yeah, I think it was, it, it was the timing. And I just think in the end, when you were ready to grab that drink, it just seems like a metaphor that God was looking after you, Amber. I mean, that's... <laughs> Fucking huge! You, you could have been on some that sort of crazy downward spiral. No, but I mean, what if you had drunk that alcohol? You could have had an, a, a big problem. I mean, you would have gone right back to the beginning, right? Right, right, Isn't right. Isn't that how it works with? And I'm then not you'd be al- calling the daughter, going, "I don't know how it happened, but a coyote almost killed. But latte, have you been drinking? Only since he was attacked. Yeah, it's but like I mean, that's, that's how it works. Blame you, you, for it. you would fall off the. You could have. Yeah, I, I still don't know if I would have, but I was really like, oh, this is a good enough excuse. That's what I thought. Yeah. Because and then you hear that tinkling of the dog tags. Yeah. That was a brilliant moment. I, my favorite was how 
he went through the garden because there was this patch of garden, not a big garden, but that's the patch that he yeah. like, came up into. Yeah. into. He must have thought like, did I drink that bottle? Am I hallucinating? Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fantastic story. Yeah, it was so. Oh my god. And now for the rest of your life, you can only order latte. Is that true? Right, I drink latte now. <laughs> with shit on the side. Yes, I oh, do. Oh, I went too far. So By the way, I don't think it, yeah. that the shitting of at first I was like, yeah, the dog shit himself, and then I thought, no, dogs. They'll eat anything, so I don't think that that was what oh, stopped the coyote, the coyote from shit. eating him. No, like, no, he, she was just saying that the dog was dirty. Right, but at first I was like, oh, it's a brilliant defense mechanism, like that fish that puts out ink. Oh, right. It's like he pooped oh, himself right. so I, so he wouldn't be desirable, right. but that would still make him that's desirable. Like if I'm on a date and I don't want to go anywhere, I just don't shave my legs because that's not going to happen now. My pants aren't coming off. It's like that. <laughs> yeah. I try that, and I still just let it happen. You still just I pop, warn yeah. I'm like, sorry, I didn't shave my legs. <laughs> Yeah, well, and I, I, Let's some do it girls anyway. might be like, "Well, he won't want to." It's like, "Oh, he's still gonna want to." Why uh, don't you try just shitting yourself? <laughs> yeah, let's shit ourselves. <laughs> hey, have you ever have you ever dog sit it again? Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. For do you, sure. Do, do you have this on your resume that I have saved dog from coyote? No, I should though. But you didn't really do I it. I didn't with, happened do on your watch. No, no, you go. I have a connection with Jesus, and He will save your dog if it gets taken Listen, away. Listen, I'm to really keep happy they gave you a hundred bucks, man. An extra hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You They're deserve so it. So sweet. I mean, that kind of stress, and that now, kind of anguish. Now they have a, a fenced-in area for Good. the dog. Yeah, they, they should have had that in the first place, especially with I'm a so tiny dog. Better. I mean, I was gonna say that guy doesn't play tennis, does he? Because there's a guy up at Griffith Park that lets his dog off leash. Yeah. No. That guy, yeah, yeah. They're I really mean, if I lived sweet. up there, I'd have a German Shepherd, something where the it coyote comes matter, in and goes. Man. No, I understand that, but at least a coyote, because coyotes are like criminals, they go to the most vulnerable thing. So right. if he sees a German Shepherd and he sees a little white dog, he's going after the little white I would dog. Think so, he's not right. looking for a challenge. I would think so, but also not to give anybody out so there the, skinny, the wrong right. idea. Yeah. The coyotes are not generally aggressive, and they don't like necessarily come after people. It's just that sometimes here in Los Angeles, no, it but gets they come so after your pets. That they, they they come down from the mountains, and they they definitely will go See, after. But I don't necessarily. Th- if you were a starving coyote. Yeah, That's but what you know what? What are you going to do? Like, what are you- but those coyotes that come out that I described that come out of Griffith Park, I don't think those are starving coyotes. They just think that it's. Of course they do. That it's all just one big place they live. And if you go over, like, hey, buddy, if you go over there, you'll get the you'll get a cat for dinner. Yeah. To them, the cats and dogs in the neighborhood, they're not trying to attack you. They don't have an agenda. There's like, I eat smaller animals. This is where the smaller animals are. Right. So it's just, don't. So it's up to you to like. It's the know food that. chain, is it yeah. not? As Louis C.K. says, the fact that we got out of the food chain is amazing. <laughs> Everybody else dies. Like, ah, oh, I'm getting eaten. Yeah. And we just get to die in a bed. Uh, Amber Tozer, I saw you on YouTube uh, doing a little dancing at Pink's <clears throat> Hot Dogs. What's happening? Oh my goodness! Oh, I used to. Ma- I haven't. I haven't made these videos in a while, but I used to make um, dance videos in public. I have twelve of them. <laughs> You're a really good dancer. Oh, thanks. And so you would just go mm-hmm. to public locations, have somebody shoot you, uh huh, and you just dance. Yeah, just make people smile. Yeah, it's like Ellen DeGeneres on the road. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On location, I've uh, yeah, I've made one in Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, <laughs> Bangkok, <That's> fantastic, <laughs> New York, San Francisco. And what did, what are they called? They're just they're just were they amber rocks or something or just amber no, dancing? Just they're just I I don't have a name for them. I I title each video, but I mash up two words like I mash up the location and the word dancing or dancer for example so um cambodia okay i just pulled it up it's the hot don hot dancer the hot dancer in front like of the dog, hot dog oh, dancing. Do- right yeah, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. and what about cambodia um what did i call the cambodia one the sim the reaper the killing fields dancer no the sim reaper Shh, no cuz it was in sim reap it wasn't sim in Reap. phnom penh yeah. oh that oh that's a whole different i actually place. did make one in phnom penh but i didn't post it and what was that one called? Oh, wow. That would be, that's, wow. So, Why don't you go to Auschwitz and make one? That would be hilarious. You're bringing all this love <laughs> into these really desperate places. But it's funny because I've made them in L.A. and New York, and everyone is pretty annoyed by me just because, oh, look, another person who needs attention or whatever. Yeah. But in Southeast Asia, they loved, they were just, like, smiling 
and into it and sort of... Uh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's interesting. And so you're such a creative person because you have these different outlets. So, so you do stand-up comedy and now you're doing these dancing things and you're big on Twitter and now you have an animated series. And so, I mean, I find that personally that I tend to have a lot of irons in the fire, as it were. Yeah. And you feel I, like that? I think it's sort of necessary because, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to make a living as a stand-up and then also... Um, Stand-up's not necessarily my favorite outlet, so I think it's good to try a, a lot of different stuff. You don't know what's going to stick. Yeah, and if it's it's hard because when you're passionate just about one project and it doesn't go or it's stalling, you, gotta, you might you go bananas. Big trouble, right? Yeah, you might pick up that liquor bottle, man. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta put a lot <laughs> of stuff keep, out there. Yeah, you have to keep busy. And you're from Colorado. Yes. And do you go back and visit your family? Yes, I go back a lot because my sister just had a baby. And so you're an aunt. Oh, my God. And that changes everything, yes. right? Yes, I go back like once every six weeks now. And how old is the baby? 18 months. And don't you just want to buy it things all the time? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. She's so... I just want to hang out with her. I'm not like a big... I don't want to buy her junk because yeah. I know I've seen my sister's... Ba- it just like yeah. ends up in yep. my sister's basement. And my sister's like, please do not... So I try to, I'd rather like spend all day at the park with her than buy her like That's a, so a crappy sweet. toy. That's very nice. Yeah. Well, also, you, there are so many beautiful toys you can get for, a, you know, um, ongoing, you know, for a niece. Like a little pearl necklace yes. thing and you add a pearl or those oh, are yeah. sweet little gifts. Or my brother has given my daughter a couple of savings bonds and stuff like that. Yes. So you can, money, that those sorts right. of things really are nice too. I'm, I would love to like the, donate to like a college. Yeah, except when the kid is five and six and you think you're going to take some donation card to yeah. their birthday party. Good luck with that, and Amber. Yeah, that's why I came up with the. Uh, I just wait until El, uh, Alabama tells mom to tell me what to get her. Because so Alabama to, loves Uncle Hannes more than my daughter loves okay. him so much. You can't even. I and I work at Universal you. at the theme park, so I work with the Simpsons. And that's her oh. favorite. So I get to go and. I guess so, Lisa Simpson. He's gotten her all dolls. the dolls, all the stuffed dolls, like this big of dolls. And let me tell you, you walk into a birthday party with Lisa Simpson doll, you know, 24 inches, yeah. it's going to get you a little more street Lisa cred. Lisa Simpson right. t-shirt. Yeah, then exactly. A, then a but how long bond. does that, how long does she love Lisa Simpson doll before it ends up? You know, honestly, Simpsons is really um, a hot button in my house. Okay. She loves it. It's, cool. it's already had quite longevity since she's been like two. She's been a big Simpsons fan. That's so. good. But other things yeah, come and go you know. very quickly. Yes. Very quickly. Uh, she has this big dollhouse, as, as little girls will, and she puts everybody in the dollhouse. So she has all the Olivia characters, which are pigs. Then she has all the Sophia the First characters, which is royalty. Then she has all the Simpsons characters, the little rubber things. So they're all in there, and they all live in this big dollhouse all together in this crazy reality world that I would I like, like to it. film. I like it. That's great. It's taking the universes yeah. where you get your Marvel universe and your DC universe and they cross yeah. over to and, get the nerds out there. And yeah. dinosaurs. So she's got the dinosaurs well, of course. the royalty and the Simpsons and the... It's adorable. <laughs> tell adorable. us a little bit. And then I want to play some Shotgun Story Worthy if you want to. Yes. Uh, but tell us about the animated series. Um... <clears throat> The animated series has been very exciting and scary and upsetting and then exciting again. Um, Sounds like the creative process. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's the anime. It's about my family and and me as a 21 year old who lives in sort of uh, a hometown that she just wants to get out of. Sort of this like white trash hometown. Is it Colorado? And, yeah, it's it's sort of based on my hometown, but it's not. My hometown's not like white trash. It's just. <laughs> it's not south. Is it south? Is it a South Park kind of thing or is it? No, it's now you're talking real. about animated Colorado. It's like it's an animated series, but it feels it feels like a Roseanne meets. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, yeah. So yeah. more like King of the Hill, like real characters. More King of the Hill, sort of Daria. I don't, do you remember Daria? I do. Yeah, do you, yeah. Are you an animator as well? No, you're a writer. I, uh, just writing it. And who do you work with to animate? Um, well, I sold it to Fox ADHD, which is the late night animation block on How Fox. How exciting! Yes, but it. Th- it's on hold. It's not getting picked up, but I'm meeting with Fox directly later, like in May. So they bought one script, but the late night animation block, they do quarter hour and mm-hmm. it's sort of crazy, like monsters and aliens. And I like so that real. quarter hour thing. Do you like that? Yeah, I, like that. I, I do. How long will the Tozer show be? It's half hour. Half hour. Uh-huh. So it's sort of a struggle to fit in their block, right. that late night animation block, because it's not like, it's not what they do, but they did buy a script and now I'm... 
I, I'm still talking to But listen, about it. this is exciting. You are a young, fresh voice. You have ideas. You have a following. You have a platform, as it were. You're a perfect shoe in I hope so. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I wish I've, I had your perspective. No, but I mean, I've met a lot of talented people in this town. And I include myself in there. No, but it's like you have to just keep putting it out there, and sooner or later, the stars will align. But I, at yeah, least I you're hope. not waiting to be cast. I mean, if you just sit around waiting to be cast, that's trouble. Oh well, you're I, creating. You're making content. Yeah, I don't think I'll I'll be. Cast in any <laughs> well, I'm not, yeah, but I'm just saying, like in general, out here, you kind of have to make your content, yeah, you have to get your own product going, yeah. I think it's it's really important, and I sometimes I stall because I get so obsessed about what the results are, like what's the point, and I, you can't for me, I can't do that because then I just procrastinate, and like, oh, I get in this like whole, like, what's the point? You just have to, you I feel like you. It's just you constant motion. You have to remain in motion like yeah. a shark. You're preaching and, to the choir. And if, yeah, mm. and if you love it though, I feel like I'm so excited when I love something because I don't, I don't give a shit I know. who likes it or whatever. Right. You know, I'm just, I just enjoy doing it. But it's, it's, it's difficult to get to that. No, I, I do, I feel that way. And I, we've been working on Storyworthy now for four years, and it's definitely my baby, and it's my passion, yeah. and it's what I want and what I do. But money, in yes. terms of making it correlate, makes it very difficult. Mm -hmm. And so, you, you know, it, it can, looks like all roses and beauty, and oh, you're so creative, and you're out there doing LA, you're doing your own thing. But at the end of the day, the rent's coming due, and mama don't have the bill ready. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, oddly right. enough, landlords do not take episodes. And I have as, a child. Oh, and so oh it starts God, getting really. Jokes? Yeah, so it gets a little muddied, but we try to look on the bright side. It does, and you get sort of caught up in like self worth. Like, if you're not making money, are are you worthy? For me, for me, right. I'm like, oh well. And you uh, look around and you think, well, that guy, that's not funny at all, or that show's mm -hmm. not good, and how that happened, yeah. and why they get a job, and who cast that, and how that get booked. Crazy making, but crazy you making you in your brain. You can't think all that in your head. You have to just stay on your path because, really, I think at the end of the day, there's room for everybody. Yeah, come on in. The water's warm. I agree. More podcasts. Because we peed better. in it. Right. Because I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> hey, you want to play some shotgun story with you? Sure. Music can only mean one thing. It's time for Shotgun Storyworthy. The game where our storyteller spins the storyworthy wheel of truth and tells a true one-minute story about the topic it lands on. So everybody, say it with me. Spin that wheel! Vacation. Um, I once went to Mauritius, which is... Uh, off the coast of South Africa, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, sort of by Madagascar. And I was there and visiting a friend and her husband. And while I was there, um, I got the Amazing Race was shooting an episode. And I got hired to be Phil Kogan, who's the host. Yeah. I got hired to be his assistant for five days. And it was amazing. He was so nice. And they put me up in this fancy, fancy hotel. And I made enough money to pay for half my trip. And it was the most... It was really incredible. So and I and I got to like go on location and see the race happen. And um, Mauritius, the people are so nice and sweet. So it was my favorite. Yeah. Wait a minute, how did you happen? You just ran into them and they said we'd like someone with an American accent to do this job, or um, my my friend's husband owned a local production company right. and they yeah. hire all local people of course because they yeah. can't fly right. it's the cheapest thing so they would hire local production companies and local people to work with them huh. that is so funny I can't even tell you it's like it's like a, an LA moment in Marisha <laughs> I know I'm like I go to the furthest place from America and they're shooting an how American how do you spell that show. is it M-A how do you spell that M-A-U-R-I-T-I-U-S I and is it, it's the part. It's the it's the continent of Africa, and that's but the country's name is Mauritia. Mauritius. Mauritius. Wow. It's off the coast of South Africa, but I think France. Oh, so it's an island. It. What are your friends doing there? My friend married. Um, is a drug lord. Jacques, um, Jacques Cousteau. A French Mauritian guy who oh. had who had um, citizenship there, but he doesn't have an accent. They live. They used to live in New York. I was friends with them in New York. Okay, and then. They moved to a great, a great opportunity to visit somebody or to, to, to take a trip like that when you know somebody there. 
Oh yeah, I I don't think I could have done it otherwise. And then to book the so Amazing Race gig and yeah. be this guy's assistant. What a blast! And Phil was so nice. Like I was worried that he was going to be sort of a diva. He was so. What's down he going to be complaining about? He's staying in that hotel. I He's know. shooting a show. What's his problem? He, he was so have great. I didn't have to do anything. I right. got him a bottle of water. Right. And made one phone call for him. It wow. was amazing. You're the yeah. perfect assistant. <laughs> I'm the. If you need nothing done, yeah. come to Amber yeah. Tozer. <laughs> I'll do She'll nothing. just start dancing at a moment's notice. And you're like, can I get a water? Hang on, I'm yeah, still did dancing. You get some, did you get some dancing in Marisha? No, I didn't make those videos till after La- that. Later, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for yes, having me. We thank really you. appreciate you. That was a great story. Thank I, you. My, I was sweating. I was getting all excited about that coyote. I couldn't believe that dog came back. Oh, my God. <sighs> I can I kind of thought the dog was going to come back. Otherwise, it was going to be the most depressing story in the world. Yeah, I don't think I And you don't seem like you would tell us the most depressing story in the world. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, All right, you guys, we're going to wrap it up right about now. I'd like to thank everybody here at Sideshow Network, including Anthony Bench and Sean Merrick. Do you see those hardworking men over there? I know. I don't understand what this hard work looks like. They are men that get paid Actually, Sean right now is playing a video game, but at some point, he will be working hard. That's part of his research, Hans. Oh, right, okay. I'd also like to thank John Tom. Thomas Griffith. You know, he's the guy that wrote the theme song. Follow. I have no idea who that is. No. I'd also like to he thank our... He was once carried off by a coyote <laughs> when you paid because you were losing your tennis match and you get a coyote, listen, go drag that guy in the woods. Right? I'd also like to thank our storyteller tonight, Amber Tozer. Thank you very much again for coming. Thank you. And on behalf of you, Hannes Finney, my dear friend and co-host, my name is Christine Blackburn saying, make it a story worthy week. Thanks for joining us on the Story Worthy Podcast. We'll be back next week with all new stories. Subscribe to Story Worthy on iTunes and visit the Story Worthy website at storyworthypodcast.com. Follow me. Follow me.